Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I am gonna be doing a little bit of a challenge that was put out by Daniel Moss over at Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith. I will link up his vi original video to this challenge of making a 14th century uh, candle holder. I will put a link down in the description down below so you can go check him out. And I'll also throw one up here in the cards real quick to his original video. Dan's a real cool guy and you should go and check his channel out. He does a lot of really neat things over there uh, at his channel. Consider subscribing. So anyways, here in a few minutes, I will be doing a timed challenge. The challenge is to make a 14th century um, style candle holder, and this is a very specific size and dimension candle holder from apparently an archeological find of some sort. So it has to be within the parameters is one of the key. Well, the other key to it is I have got to get the entire thing finished, forged the whole bit in 20 minutes. That's supposed to be the challenging portion of actually recreating this candlestick is to do it in about 20 minutes. I thought this was a really great thing to get a part of. Daniel Moss asked me to do it and I said, hey, I'm really keen on doing that. So let's go forward. So some quick things to point out and note, I haven't had any practice at this. I haven't, made, I haven't made one of these before. I haven't been practicing making 10, 15, 20 of them. This will be my first go of it, which I think is really good and true to the spirit of the challenge, so to speak, and to help stretch you as a bit of a blacksmith to see if you can kind of keep up with those guys of old, if you will. So I'm really excited about that, but what I do have set up and what you may want to set up for yourself as well. Everything comes in metric measurements, units of measurement. If you're here in the US or somewhere else in the world that does not use the metric system for buying steel stock and sizes, you will have to convert from metric over to standard, you know, to imperial, if you will. So just keep that in mind. So I've already done the math on those, I think, <laughs> as well as Roy can do math. Um, and, and as close as I can get is an equivalent. So we'll be starting with a four inch long piece of quarter inch by one inch flat material, mild steel. And that's what we're gonna be starting with and that's what it starts out with. Also, I've got some tooling kind of set up here in advance. I have a guillotine tool with some fairly large fullers on it. I'm going to do that to start my necking down process and then I will move on and continue with a hand hammer. Now, if you wanna see what the specific contest kinda, of, you know, uh, rules are for doing this challenge, you really should watch Daniel Moss's video. So, without further ado, I'm gonna bring you guys right in to what we are doing, and I'm gonna get right on with it. I might talk as we go, but my goal in this video is to knock this project out in under that 20 minute, uh, 20 minute limit. And I should be able to put a timer, if I can figure it up on editing, I'll put a timer on the screen as soon as I start hammer. And uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so I've got the piece hot. I'm getting ready to pull it out. And I'm going to go ahead and start the timer now. On this, first, on this first setup here, you wanna make sure that you take your time to get things set up right before you go too crazy with this. Go, get that out of the way. All right, it's already gotten too cold. We'll put it down in there, get it back in the fire. We're gonna get that hot again. While that heats up, I've got this piece of paper here. So hopefully you guys can see what we're going for. 
So what we're working for right now, hopefully it's not too bright. Turn the light away for a second. That's probably better. What we're looking for right now is we're going to draw out this material to 8 mil square and roughly 135 mil millimeter long. That's what I'm going for for this first stage. I like breaking things down into steps is my preferred method of doing things. We're good and hot again. get it hot again. So one thing I should point out here as well, you can't use a striker or a power hammer. You have to do this by your own, by your own volition, if you will. And we'll have to check it on occasion. Pick this up. Yeah, so that's going to be 135 millimeter. It's be 135 millimeter from that shoulder out this way in total length before we put our taper and round up um, the neck there on it. So I'm going to try to hit that metric before then I draw down a taper on this piece. Might also help to get things that you don't need in your way, out of your way. If they're not helping you make this thing, get them out of your way. So roughly what we're looking is, it's about five and three eighths inch of the material with roughly five sixteenths or so finished dimension by the time we reach that. We'll measure this real quick. See where we're at. We are at Four and three quarter, four and three quarter and three eighths of an inch in dimension. So we need to go just a bit further. Once I get this to full length dimension, I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to spread out what will become the candle cup. Just preparing some tongs to have them at the ready. I may go to stretching this over the horn again. Hopefully everything's still in focus and looking good. Go ahead and turn this back here, put a little bit of light back more on the subject. I think the biggest challenge you're going to have is time management, orchestration of process, of course, but probably the biggest thing that you'll have a struggle with doing this is just getting the heat quick enough. We're already six minutes into this whole shebang. Leaves me 14 minutes to go. Oh, I'll go over the horn. Really stretch this material out.
perhaps on second heat, on the second heat of this thing, I should have been at the horn all along, or um, the third heat, it should have been there all along. All right, so there, I went just a little bit past. We are at five and, if I go from the shoulder, yeah, we're at like five and three quarter inches. So it's a little smaller than five sixteenths. It's a little smaller than five sixteenths here, but it's the correct thing here. So we'll just include that as part of our taper when we do our taper. So we'll flip that around. So the goal of doing this video, it's not only just because it's fun, it's, it's something fun to do, but it is also the, the ultimate goal here is to show you why it's probably important to practice. Practice something like this a whole bunch of times. One of the rules about the contest is that you can't, um, in the contest, you can't just put post multiple videos of you doing this. It's a one, one video, one entry. So that's kind of the key of the contest rules there. And so you probably should practice this. That's allowed, by the way. Practice this several times, make several practice pieces until you get something you're perfectly happy with. That will end up looking like the drawing when you go and do this. You'll be able to pare down your time quite a bit. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spread this out to 60 mil. Check my head width. I'm almost there. Let me get a little bit more width out of it. We are at nine minutes according to the camera, which we're probably might be less than that on the timer. Got her a little roasty there. Heat that up again. I'm gonna start dressing it over the horn. Start dressing some of the curvature up. And the face. All right, I've met my width parameter. I'm gonna round up around the head where it's been spread out. I'm gonna go ahead and round that section of it up and then I'm gonna round out the tip. Bring this over here again. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's rounded up here, and then the tip is pointed and rounded. And in total, we're looking for 200 
and 10 millimeter. Again, I'm gonna round that over the horn of the anvil is where I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna round up that cross section. We'll see where we're at. There we go. I had to get that heated up. It twisted a bit from the shank. Thirteen minutes. Got seven minutes left to finish. Right now, I should. I'm kind of figuring out as I go. There's some different methods I would have took to get to the same result. But here we are. We're going to give it our best shot to get it the rest of the way. I'm going to give this a little bit of a twist here to twist it back in line. The original so it got a little bit out of hand there. Make sure that twist is knocked out of it. Use a block in the anvil. I'm going to use that to start the rounding on my cup. around and draw out my point. I'm running out of time, so I'm not even referencing the sheet now. I just need to get this close to where it needs to be. All right, we're right at parameter there. Gonna go ahead and take off this, round this up. Take a little bit extra time there, just round that up nicely. 
this being a time thing really kind of hinders it in a lot of ways. Every time you got to take a heat, so I'm going to come up, do it somewhere right in there or so. I'll make a knock. Seventeen minutes. Got three minutes left to make this weld happen. One inch. That's not gonna work. Ah. Might use a mandrel here in a second. I'm gonna bend away from that knock. Don't think I made that knock up high enough. Nope, I did not. Okay. I'll get this prepped anyhow for welding. Make a quick adjustment. Prep for welding. This will most likely not be to parameter, <laughs> but hopefully I'll have it done in the 20. Again, you should really practice this several times and work out your orchestration of processes if you're going to do this. There's no time for getting this up to tender loving care. We're just going to take it to screaming hot and weld it. All right, gotta quickly check my measurement. Let's see, 210 to do, 90 mil. I think that would have been about right. All right, I'm gonna guess that's about it. And I didn't finish it in time, doesn't look like. Yeehaw! Well, we'll keep going with it, nonetheless. I'm actually going to flip it around. So it's quite a lot of fun to try to do something at this speed, but I think with the heat times and things like that, 20 minutes is basically not enough time to really do your best job on this. If I had about 25 minutes to 30 minutes of time, it might be possible. But with only 20 minutes to do something like this, never doing it before, you're going to run into a host of issues, kind of like what you've seen me run into here. And uh, that, will become, that will become your downfall, if you will that that bent up into place it's just going to take some fiddle time because that's not quite right
All right, well, I was able to accomplish the basic form of this thing in, in the 20 minute allotment, um, just wasn't able to complete. So again, it's one of those interesting things. You should probably practice it a couple dozen times before you get started on it. Whenever you're in a rush like this, you're gonna have to make some changes. You have to make some tweaks, little things like that. Daniel Moss got real close to finishing at 20 minutes, which was awesome to see. He also practiced a few times first to get, get his times down, which is real critical because there's a lot of orchestration of processes here that you have to undertake to get it right. So look what we got here. Get a few things adjusted if we can. One thing to point out is this is something that I say an awful lot about, uh, about blacksmithing, you know, a lot of times, is blacksmithing is an old, slow craft. It's really, there's ways of being efficient at blacksmithing, but in the long run, uh, again, you have, there's this dividing line between being efficient and being accurate. So your accuracy will go up as your skill increases and your speed should follow somewhat. And I'm still gonna fart around with that for a little bit. So I'm gonna get that hot. One more time, I got a little S curve in there I don't like, and I'm fighting to get it out. So if you're interested in doing this, go check out Daniel Moss's channel. See if you can do a better job of it than I have with explanation and all this other jazz I've been doing here. See, see if you can do a better job of it. You might just surprise yourself and do way better of a job. than what I could even have dreamed of doing. In fact, there's probably a high probability of it. And maybe ask Daniel Moss what his trade secret is <laughs> while you're over there. All right, we're gonna call that done. I'll have to look at this once I go inside and see what my actual official time is and go turn this thing in. And there you have it. So that's supposed to, I imagine, just get pushed into a crack of a wall or something like that. This little finger holds the candlestick from falling out is my assumptions, which could be all wrong. And then the cup here is obviously to hold the butt end of the candle. There you go. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, if you're interested in doing this challenge, I suggest you watch Daniel Moss's original video on it. Um, again, I thought it was a lot of fun. Pretty cool to do. Sorry, Dan, it took me so long to get this video out. And if you guys enjoyed this type of content, you wanna see more, consider subscribing, hitting the jingly bell for notifications, and uh, you know, you'll be able to catch all my videos. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. God bless. We'll catch you on the next one.